There is a huge misconception when it comes to reading academic research papers, and that is that you need to read the paper from the start to the end to be able to understand and comprehend it completely. The secret is to extract the right bits of information using the right tools that are available to you today. And if I were to embark on a degree or a PhD again, I would definitely be using this reading hack that I learned only in the last couple of years. And to help us do this, of course, we are going to be using an AI tool called Jenny. Now, Jenny, if you have have not heard of it before. It was made specifically for high level academics and researchers within university, within academia, with a real emphasis on helping and supporting you to write. So the first thing that you need to do before we can even start reading is to upload your research papers to your Jenny library. And this is really easy. It takes a couple of seconds. So you can upload your research paper as a PDF, or you can upload it from somewhere like Zotero or Mendeley. And this ends up in your library. So I'm going to then add them to a collection, which is essentially like a folder so here I'm going to highlight and select the papers that I just uploaded and I want to add them to a collection called machine learning papers so that's going to be in a nice little folder and you'll see how that becomes more useful later on when we try to understand the papers a bit better you want to start to ask questions but you want to start broad before you go more specific so phase one this is phase one where you want to get the big picture and this is the one minute summary so we're going to ask questions like summarize the main contributions of the study what are the key arguments made in this paper or what problem does this paper try to solve so we can start to ask these questions directly to the ai chat and one of the reasons why i really like jenny is because the answers are really simple and quite easy to understand so the, the answer in the ai chat isn't overly complex scientific language is actually quite easy to digest and understand as someone who may not be so confident in this topic and something that you can do that's also really helpful is you can hover over the reference and you can say scroll to the quote so that particular point that the AI chat has mentioned what it will do is it will highlight where in the research paper that this section or this bit of understanding has come from so I think that's really useful and it's really important for you as someone who isn't going to read the paper from front to back but you still need to know where this information has come from if you're going to be using it in writing or anything else in the future now we're moving on to phase two and this is where you dig into the details and you're getting your quick five minute analysis so we're going to ask questions like what methods did the author use what are the key findings in the results section or what are the main limitations and this is helping us just delve in a bit deeper to be able to understand more complex ideas and discussion points within the paper when i've asked this method question i've been given lots of information about the algorithms the paradigm and different aspects of like the systematic review and how they even got to the point where they were able to write this review paper in the first place now this is one of my favorite features i think within jenny's ai chat so you can use this tool called explain section so you click on it at the top and then you can highlight any section and i think this is really powerful for your images or your figures diagrams those diagrams especially in research papers are so complicated and so hard to understand so you can highlight and then I said can you explain what this diagram shows what's the difference between false positive and true positive so I just wanted a bit of an understanding and I think Jenny's done a really good job here to explain to me in the most simple way possible what the different axes show what the colored lines the shaded areas the difference between the false positive and true positive and just kind of explaining it as simply as possible for me to understand stand I, I think this is such a game changer because this is something that I really struggled with when I was reading research papers. I think the images and the diagrams that are used sometimes are just so hard to understand. Um, I've also highlighted here just to show you guys uh, just a paragraph of text so you can use it for literally anything. But I, I truly think that uh, the game changer is to be able to highlight the figures and the images to understand them better. You're getting an answer that's in context with the rest of the paper. So it will relate whatever the image is to to what the paper topic is about and give you a more wholesome understanding of the research paper. Now we're moving on to phase three, where we want to synthesize and critique the text with the aim to get a much deeper and richer understanding. When you're reading a research paper, it's not enough for you to just skim the text and do a quick one, two minute understanding. You need to go 
a lot deeper to be able to understand the critical discussions and how this paper relates to other papers. So another really useful feature on Jenny is that you can ask questions about certain collections. So I've said use the machine learning papers as my context uh, and then I'm going to ask questions such as are there any papers from this collection that supports the arguments made within this paper? So it does say yes there are other papers and it gives me the references for all of them and it also allows me to click in and go to that section and scroll to the part where that has been mentioned within the other research paper. Alternatively, as a bit of a bonus feature, you can select certain research papers. So rather than selecting a whole folder, I can say actually, can you just look at these three papers as my context? So for example, I've said find three key quotes from these papers, that would be useful for a literature review about the future of machine learning. So just from those three research papers, I want to get a nice quote and very easily just like that no time wasted I have been given a few quotes that would be really useful and even the reason why they are particularly useful uh, so it justifies it for me so I understand why they've selected them. Now I want to show you another feature that I think is a, another game changer as well. I know I've said everything is a game changer but I really think that Jenny has introduced a lot of new features on the platform that weren't there maybe six months ago but have really like make small changes but have, have made a big impact on how you'd use these tools to help you read faster. So this is where you can save a prompt that you've created that you can then use in the future for any other times that you read. So for example, I've got one that I did in the past called critical, which gives me a prompt that allows me to ask about critical uh, discussion at critical points in any paper. But I'm going to make a new one now called summary, where I say, read the PDF file and give me a 100 word summary of the results and the main objectives in this paper. So I've saved it, which means that any time that I go to a research paper, a new one that I've uploaded, and I want to get a summary, I can just go to my saved prompts, click on that one, and it will always give me a 100 word summary of the results and the main objectives. So it's just, I know that it's only a few seconds of typing, it's 30 seconds, but it's just like finding that perfect prompt that I want to use every single time consistently. And what I think this would be really useful for is if you had like a research table of all your papers and you know a lot of us do this when we're in academia and research we have like all our papers and then we have different like sections and different columns so like main results objectives limitations if you were to use the same prompt for every single paper you could fill up that table really easily with the same fixed information in each one, so I think that's really powerful. There is of course also a writing feature, so you can start a new page where you can begin to write in a document. And here I've written a bit of an essay already about machine learning, but there are things that I want to still clean up a little bit. There are some quotes that I want to find, some citations that I want checked. So there's a sentence here that I want to find a citation for, but I'm not 100% sure if I have the right citation or the right paper within my library. So I can just say, go to the cites tool, so I'm finding a citation, and then I can either discover a new citation that's not in my library, so it's just searched for a citation that's relevant to what I've said, or I can discover one in my library itself. So I think this is really useful for those times that you just quickly need to find a citation to match and support what you've said, but you don't necessarily have the time or you, know, you don't need to go looking through a whole literature library or for trying to find research papers, reading through them. It's very complicated and just takes way too much time than necessary. So here I've added the citations directly into the document and then it magically adds it to my reference list at the end in the correct format. So I can change that format. I use Harvard usually, but you can change it to any other formatting that you'd like. Um, and that changes the whole list for you within a few seconds. This method of reading is more conversational. It's more, I ask a question, I get an answer. Okay, I think about another question and I get a different answer. I'm consistently asking questions and consistently getting answers from Jenny. Number one, it avoids wasting time. So I'm reading all this dense information and most of it I'm probably not going to use. Number two, I'm getting targeted information. So I want to know the limitations. I will get that information. I want to know what the gap in literature is. I will get that information and exactly what I want. And the third is that it promotes active engagement rather than just passive. When you're asking questions like this and you're delving deeper into certain aspects, you're engaging with the literature rather than 
the traditional way where you have the paper, you've printed it out, you've got a highlighter, you're just highlighting things, you're just passively reading. This allows you to actually ask questions so you're more likely to remember the information and comprehend it more efficiently. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'll leave a link down below so you can go and try Jenny out for free, but if you do want to purchase the paid plan, then there will be a discount code there also for you. But if you have any other questions and you want me to show you any other ways of using Jenny, I would love to. So if you have any questions specifically about your use case please let me know and i'm happy to add on a little touch in the next video and i hope to see you very very soon bye